Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to review for you and give you an overview of Bastian's Piano for Adults book series. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, I now offer online piano lessons. So if you're looking for one, there's going to be a link in the description below. So I've done a video quite a few months ago about the best adult method books and for some reason this one was left out. I don't know why, I don't think I've ever heard of many of the Bastion books because they are not very common in the UK. I've known about their basic kids series but now that I went onto the website I saw that they have loads and loads of series, different kinds, old and new. Also some of you were asking me in the comments for my opinion of this book so I had to do a review of it. So I got this book and I had a good look through and I had to look through the second one as well and I have to say it's actually quite a good method but in this video I'm going to tell you my pros and cons and I'm also going to quickly page through and show you a rough overview what you're going to learn from it and how quickly concepts are introduced. So let's start with the book, the series, the structure and what you can get in it. So as I said, it's for adults and this is an all-in-one edition. And I'm very happy to see that most of the adult piano books are becoming all-in-one because you have to realize that theory and technique and sight reading is all part of being a pianist. You can't leave it out, but when it's broken into four separate books, especially adults are more likely to just get the lesson book and cut corners here and there and take, you know, a shortcut, but it's not going to be a good result in the long run. And I think the publishers realized that and tried to put everything into one book so it's an all-rounder and everybody's going to get all the benefits from one book instead of always looking through four books and trying to find the matching chapters and so on. Now this course comes in two books as you can see on the back there is book one and book two and both of these books are accompanied by CDs if you buy the CD version and the newer version the newer edition has online resources so you can actually access the music with a code from the book because obviously no one has a CD player anymore. So two books, one and two, and it doesn't really give you any option to progress after book two. With the kids editions, you've got quite a wide range of books from level one to level five, and then you've got the new traditions, and then you've got the older beginners, but with the adult, it's just one, two, and then basically they I assume that they think that after book two, you're ready to just play repertoire, uh, like proper piano pieces. Now you also have a few supplementary editions. You've got two Christmas books and you have classics, you've got religious favorites, you've got solo repertoire, easy classics and favorite melodies. So as you can see, there's a little bit of everything apart from real pop rock music and jazz. So that's something you'll not find in the supplementary books. Now the course creators claim that this is a classical method. So it's focusing on classical music, but on the website, they also state that you're going to learn hymns and spirituals and traditionals and a bit of everything in these books. So it's not strictly classical, but they claim that this is a classical classical approach and a classical method. Now, as you can see, this edition again is compound, which means that the book stays nicely flat when you put it on the piano, which is a must when you get a piano book, especially if you have worksheets, because it's very difficult to use perfect bound books when you want to play from them as they quite often close in front of you. So that was about the edition, the structure of the series and the supplementary books and the available resources. Now let's have a look inside the book and let's see what we find inside. The book has eight chapters and it's 160 pages. So quite a thick book, it has a lot of information. I would say that this is kind of a medium paced book, medium to fast paced. Now, if I have to compare it to the other two most popular books, Piano Adventures and Alfred's Basic Piano Course, then I would say it's kind of in between the two. It follows the same kind of ideas as Piano Adventures and lays out the concepts in a similar way and the repertoire is quite similar to Piano Adventures, but it puts a huge, huge, huge emphasis on chords and playing chords, understanding chords, and that makes it more like the Alfred method, which again is very chordal based in the left hand. Having said that this is a classical method, actually I think that 80 
80% of the repertoire is traditional songs, spirituals, and made up little tunes. It's very few actual classical pieces that you'll find in the first book. And I do understand that it's very difficult to play real classical music at this level, especially at the very beginning stages. But if you look at the classic piano course or the piano adventures, they incorporate slightly more classical uh, pieces in their repertoire inside the book. So I just wanted to mention that because they claim that this is a classical method, but I feel like it's more spiritual, traditional and kind of everyday songs as opposed to a proper classical method. The way the book is laid out, again, is more like a mixture between traditional church and classical playing. It's not a traditional classical approach in the sense that there is so much emphasis placed on chords that you would never find something like that in, in, a, in a proper classical approach. And that's why I said it's kind of in between Piano Adventures and Alfred's. Uh, method. Now, I'm, I want to mention some of my favorite things about this book, and then I will mention some of the things that I found were missing or not so great. So the first thing is that this book contains a lot of worksheets, so it's supposed to be theory as well. And I will show you an example here. So that's uh, a worksheet. You can see there's a lot to fill in. The worksheets are focusing mostly on intervals and chords and note recognition and some rhythms. So it doesn't go too much into like writing scales and um, dynamics and, and other aspects of music theory. It focuses mostly on recognizing notes and chords, but you will find a lot, a lot of worksheets in this book, unlike in Piano Adventures or Alfred, which has very limited worksheets compared to this one. So from the music theory aspect and worksheet aspect, I think this one is the best from the three. I like the layout of the book as well. Now, if you look at the standard page here, it's nicely laid out, it's spacious, it's not too crowded, it's not too small, and all the important information is always highlighted in a box, so you can see what's really important, and there is a lot of explanation regarding the concepts in the book, so it's actually a really good book for learning by yourself. The book is quite comprehensive, it introduces concepts in a nice logical way, although some things come a little bit later than in other uh, method books, but all in all, you're going to learn most of the basic concepts in book one before going into book two. Another thing I really like about this book is that they have little snippets about music history. So when you play a piece by a famous composer, they're going to give you a little background about that composer and the music itself and the musical era. So you're going to learn about the style and you're going to have some more general knowledge about music and classical music. This book focuses on interval reading from chapter one. So in the first chapter, you learn the basic notes for the right hand, left hand, five notes for each hand, and then it introduces the interval of a second, learning about steps, learning about skips and bigger and bigger intervals in each chapter. So it combines notes recognition with interval reading, which is very, very good for sight reading. It's a very good approach for that. Very early on you're going to recognize intervals by just looking at them, their shapes, and also the same thing applies to chords. So you don't have to spend a long time trying to memorize notes where they are, you can just follow a pattern. So I have to uh, praise the sight reading approach of the book as well and the note reading approach. Now in the first three chapters, as you'll see in a second, a lot of concepts are introduced which could have been spread out a little bit more. And I said this in Piano Adventures as well, that the first chapter of Piano Adventures was so condensed, there was so much thrown into that first chapter that I don't think that's necessary because it's just going to scare off new students and it's very confusing as well, especially if you've never played the piano before and you have no idea what musical concepts are. I think getting a few notes and a couple of rhythms in the first chapter is plenty and leave dynamics chords, inversions and all these things for much later on, but this book tries to give you kind of an overview of it all in the first two chapters. Now, don't be afraid of that, you can just ignore it because all of those concepts are going to be reintroduced in the later chapters, but I just wanted to mention it that it is in the first few chapters and it can be a little bit disappointing or overwhelming when you see that and you feel like it's too much, I don't understand that. Another thing that this book introduces very early on is chords. Now you can see this is in the first chapter before you even start reading any notes on the staff, it's trying to make you play chords right at the very beginning in pre-notation. I forgot to say the first chapter has a little bit of pre-notation to get you play a few tunes and chords before going on to the staff. As you know from my previous reviews, 
I'm not a fan of pre-notation for adults. I think for small kids, for four or five year olds, it's a good thing because they can start playing without reading notes. But I think adults are more than capable of memorizing three or four notes in, in the span of an hour. So they can easily work with those two, three notes on their first lesson. But anyway, this book has some of this pre-notation in the first chapter, but even halfway through the first chapter, it turns onto the staff and notation. So you're not going to waste too much time on that. Just to carry on with a couple of things that I didn't like so much. So one was the pre-notation thing that I just mentioned and the first few chapters being very kind of condensed and let's put everything into the pot and throw them into the deep water. The other thing that I missed from this book is it's supposed to incorporate technique but I didn't find too much on technique in this book. Now, don't get me wrong, each chapter has like a little song which is labeled technique, but it's not really different to any of the other songs in the lesson. So it's, it's not really getting you to play too many technical challenges. If I compare this book to the first book of A Dozen A Day, which is just a very simple kids technique book, you're going to find far more about technique in that book than in this book. And it does introduce staccato, it does introduce chords, it gives you some pictures and hand shapes and so on. But apart from two finger exercises, one by Hannon, and there's another one, I think made up one in the later chapters, it's very limited what you're going to do regarding technique. So you'll need to supplement the book either with a dozen a day, uh, Cherney, Hannon, or some other exercises to make sure that those fingers really develop uh, independence and your fingers are equally trained. Another thing I was missing is scales and arpeggios. The C major scale doesn't appear until the very end of the book. And by that time, you're actually playing quite complicated songs. And I feel that one scale should be learned at least by the middle of a of a beginner book because you have to start practicing the thumb crossings, you have to start practicing even playing in a sequence and some broken chords or arpeggios would be uh, very useful as well. Now the C major comes in the very last chapter of the book and you're going to learn a small broken chord but not actual arpeggios. So that's something that I'm missing from the book and I think it could be included much earlier on but it's just one of those things. So these were just a couple of moans about the book and things to to look out for or watch out for if you're deciding between um, this and other piano methods. Now let's start going through from chapter one and see what we find. The very first page you'll see this um, little introduction to piano playing, hand shapes, uh, keyboard geography, how to find notes, black notes, white notes and so on. And on the next page you'll see the notes and the names of the notes. Moving on you get basic rhythms and a worksheet and after that we start playing songs in five finger positions and it's just pre-notation. A couple of kind of spirituals and two little classical tunes. Just on the next page when you can't even play three notes it throws in full chords and play them in sequence and count as well so again I think that's completely unnecessary but it's in the book. On the next page in chapter two, it introduces musical notation and you start learning about the stave, the notes, pitches and rhythms. So it's only like five pages before you get into that. On the next page, we start learning about rests and then the first bits of intervals are coming. We learn about the step harmonic melodic interval of a second. And here is a little etude to help you practice recognizing seconds or steps. On the next page, you start learning about uh, skips and tied notes and dynamic signs and the slur and the third, fourth and fifth interval. So this is all in chapter two. There's a lot going on in chapter two. Then you get a little classical piece, the Bridal March by Wagner. Now, as you can see, the sheet music is really well laid out. It's big, big fonts, and you always get the starting note in the note head. And after that, you're just supposed to focus on reading the intervals and the patterns. So it's really, really good for sight reading. Then we get the chimes, the big band. Then we start harmonizing melodies. So in the next, on the next page, you start playing melodies against chords. So again, this comes really early on in Piano Adventures. This would be much later on. And then again, lots of spiritual songs, a couple of etudes. You're learning about the primary chords in C major and how to switch between them, a really good warm up for it. Row, row your boat. You'll find quite a few kind of nursery rhymes in childish little songs. 
simple gifts, the upbeat, kumbaya, spiritual, and moving to the F chord, fanfare, and the fermata sign. He's a jolly good fellow. When the saints go marching in, here you start learning about the accidentals, flats, sharps, and naturals. Now in chapter four, it says reading in middle C. So this book kind of breaks down into chapters. First you play in middle C position, then in G position, then F position. I wouldn't call this a, a fixed position book because it moves away from the C position very quickly, but I think it's good to kind of get used to one position before you move on. I know many other methods jump around very quickly and try to not keep you in one position, but as a beginner, you need kind of a home, somewhere to go back, somewhere to feel comfortable before you move away from it. That's just my opinion. Here we've got again quite a few traditional songs, Yankee Doodle, Down in the Valley. Then we go to the Quavers, so the eighth notes. Again, they come in quite early, which is really good because some books wait a very long time before they introduce them and they're quite essential for playing nice songs. And then we've got a little classical piece, Minuet in G by Bach. Then we've got Surprise Symphony by Haydn and we learn about articulation, staccato and legato as well. And here is a little technique which actually the good thing about the technique pieces is that they give you some kind of suggestions and explanation on what you're supposed to do in those pieces. Lots of worksheets again, and chapter five moves into reading in the G position. So the exact same thing, but trying to look at intervals in the G position. And of course, you're going to learn about the primary chords in G. So chord one, chord five, the inversions of the chords. You get a little Bach piece here again, Musette. Now, one thing that happens here, which is very important, is legato against staccato. Very important skill to be able to play different things, to, to develop independence between the hands and the fingers. And then you get another chord etude. You've got so many chord studies, like every time you learn a new chord there is a new little study to practice the chords and that's why I said it places so much emphasis on chords that by the end of this book you're going to be a master of chords and how to play simple triads and inversions. Then Hush My Little Baby, again warming up, lightly row stars above, another chord etude for the C chord, at Sunset, Lavender's Blue, Oh Susanna, so it's basically just folk song traditionals and uh, some spirituals. Morning Rainbow and Harmonic Fifths, Legato Staccato, and here you ha finally have a challenge piece, which is Vivaldi's Spring. So one classical piece in this entire chapter and 10 other ones which are not classical. So I wouldn't really call this a classical approach. Then again, lots of lots of um, worksheets. The worksheets are very similar to be honest, like they kind of make you practice the same chords and the same intervals. But the good thing about that is that you're going to be a very good sight reader by the end of this book. The next chapter introduces some new rhythms with quavers, the dotted crotchet or dotted quarter note, and some rests, angels we have heard on high, the repeat signs, da capo signs, da segno al fine, coda signs, America, good morning, and here is the first finger exercise by Schmidt. So it is a little finger exercise, a technical challenge, but this is on page 97. So you had to go through a hundred pages to start playing your first finger exercise. Usually when I start teaching anybody before they even start reading any notes in the sheet music or in the book, I teach them one simple finger exercise that can get their fingers to move without reading music because it's a really important skill to be able to play without spending hours and hours on learning notes. And this book waits 100 pages before it gives you the first finger exercise. Moving on in the next chapter, we're reading in F major. Again, lots of etudes, chord etude, another prelude, which is basically just broken chords and chords, jingle bells, warm up, and here you get the first blues, 12 bar blues. You learn about the 12 bar blues and then it's just two full chapters about blues songs. So you can see again that this is not a classical approach because classical books never talk about blues. It's just not in the classical repertoire. Then you get some boogie and then they throw in randomly um, the blue Danube waltz into a blues chapter. Then you get another blues song and here is another little technical piece. Blues, 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 
lots of songs just focusing on the chords and the chord progressions in blues. And then you finally get your scales, chords and inversions in the final chapter. So it's going to teach you how to play scales, how to play chords and how to invert chords into first inversion, second inversion, how to recognize them. We get Hallelujah Chorus, Autumn Fest, Country Gardens, Interlude, and you get the A minor scale, the relative minor scale, a little prelude in A minor. So you can see that the pieces are getting quite complex, both rhythmically and harmonically. So that's the kind of difficulty you get towards the end of the book, a mixture of melody and chords, but mostly it's going to be chords in the left hand and melody in the right hand. Not as much as the Alfred book, but very close to that. The Entertainer, it cannot be missed from any piano book. So your first proper kind of upbeat piece. And this is not an easy version of it, so it's going to sound quite nice. Amazing Grace, you have a finger extension study by Hannon, and then you have a proper classical piece, Furelis, in the original form. It's a challenge piece, but again, it's almost at the end of the book. Then you get some more worksheets about intervals and the end of the book, Music Dictionary. So as you can see, there is a lot in it, but it's mostly spirituals, traditionals, and a lot of worksheets revolving around chords and intervals and reading intervals. So if you want a proper classical method, this book is not for you. There are other methods, the Piano Adventures one or the classic adult method, which is extremely fast paced. Those two would be more classical approaches. I would still say that this is kind of, I, I won't call it a pop approach, but it definitely prepares you more for pop music than classical music because you play so many chords in the left hand and very little on what really matters in classical music, you know, shaping the melody, lifting up your hand and playing double voicings doesn't even appear the double voicing in the entire book. So these are the things that are good in the book and some of the things that are missing. I hope this review gave you a little bit of an insight into this method. Right, this is the end. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. As always, subscribe for more.